Hey guys, it's Oscar Grant back with another video. Now, in today's video, we will be discussing the biodiversity of sauropods in the Morrison Formation. So, without a further ado, let's get to it. Now, for some of you who have watched my series, Arachin Past, you might know that the third episode does cover a segment that is set in the Morrison Formation. Now, the episode does talk a bit about sauropods and the evolution of sauropods, but it only scratches the surface of the Morrison Formation sauropods. There are plenty of sauropods in the Morrison Formation, and the episode only shows three of them, that being Apatosaurus, Diplodocus, and Brontosaurus. Now, before we cover the different species of sauropods that lived in the Morrison Formation, we must talk about the uh, biodiversity of the Morrison Formation as a whole. So, without a further ado, let's get on with that. The Morrison Formation is located in the United States and spans across the states of Colorado, Wyoming, and Utah. Now, the formation dates back to the late Jurassic period and is renowned for its many discoveries of prehistoric fauna, which of course include of reptiles such as turtles, crocodiles, and lizards, as well as mammals and pterosaurs. And then who could forget the dinosaurs? So, uh, we have a wide range of carnivores, including of species, uh, which are, of course, Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Sauropaganax, and Torvosaurus, as well as Silurosaurs, early Tyrannosauroids, and Troodontids. Meanwhile, with herbivores, you have a range of small ornithopods, Thyreophorans, which include Stegosaurs and Ankylosaurs. And then you have the sauropods, which are. Uh, there's a very wide range of sauropods. Uh, so I guess I'll just mix them off now. This is a big one. Alright, starting now. Dystrophaeus, Haplocanthosaurus, Sawusia, Marapunisaurus, Catodocus, Galliomopus, Amphicolius, Brontosaurus, Apatosaurus, Diplodocus, Supersaurus, Barosaurus, Chimarosaurus, and Brachiosaurus! So now there begs the question, why were there so many sauropods in the Morrison Formation? Well, I think the first answer to that question would be the environment, the habitat, the ecosystem. So, um, I think I'm gonna have to get my script out for this one. Okay, um, <coughs> <coughs> the Morrison Formation represents a period when much of North America was a vast floodplain with lush vegetation. Teeming with a variety of plant life, the, the abundant sorry about that, vegetation including ferns, cycads, and conifers, which kind of filled the niche of trees, um, provided a bountiful food source for large herbivores like sauropods. Their long necks and small heads allowed them to reach and consume vegetation high above the ground, giving them a competitive advantage in this environment. Because keep in mind, a lot of the other herbivores during this time were much smaller than the sauropods and couldn't reach the high conifer leaves, which the sauropods could easily just reach up and uh, use, their, use their mouths to kind of just like strip the, uh, the branches of the conifer leaves. So, now, climate and migration. During the late Jurassic, the climate of North America was generally warm and humid, further contributing to the growth of dense plant cover. This climate and that this climatic, yes, that's right, condition may have encouraged migration patterns of sauropods as they followed the seasonal shifts of vegetation in search of sustenance. Um, the favorable climate combined with abundant food sources likely played a significant role in the proliferation of sauropods within the Morrison Formation. Now there comes herbivore diversity. The Morrison Formation supported a rich, rich ecosystem of herbivores, providing an array of dietary niches. Sauropods such as Diplodocus, Apatosaurus, Barosaurus, Brachiosaurus, and Chimarosaurus were among the most prominent species that inhabited this region, as well as Brontosaurus as well. 
Um, each of these sauropods exhibited, exhibited sorry, my bad, uh, distinct feeding habits and adaptations, allowing them to coexist and exploit various plant resources. This diversity within the sauropod group contributed to their overall success and dominance in the Morrison Formation. And then there comes the predator-prey dynamics. Now, he did briefly mention um, the uh, diversity of carnivores in the Morrison Formation. Uh, now, the presence of sauropods in the Morrison Formation also influenced the dy dynamics of the predator-prey relationships, or the food chain. Large carnivorous dinosaurs like Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus shared this ecosystem, and the abundance of sauropods provided an ample food source for these predators. The constant interplay between herbivores and carnivores contributed to the balanced ecosystems that further facilitated the success of sauropods. Um, yeah, while carnivores such as Ceratosaurus and as well as Torvosaurus and like Allosaurus and stuff mostly would have avoided sauropods because, um, you know, why try to get down the big guy when you could get the little guy like the, um, like the ornithopod or the the ankylosaurus or some shit, I don't know. The rich fossil record of sauropods in the Morrison Formation could be partly attributed to the taphonomic processes and the preservation bias. Favorable conditions for fossilization, such as sedimentary deposition in floodplains and river channels, played a role in preserving the remains of these colossal creatures. As a result, the abundant sauropod fossils we find today may reflect not only their high population density, but also the unique preservation conditions of the Morrison Formation. The prevalence of sauropods in the Morrison Formation is a testament to the complex interplay of factors that shaped the late Jurassic ecosystem. A combination of abundant vegetation, favorable climate, diverse species, and intricate predator-prey relationships contributed to the pro proliferation of sauropods. The Morrison Formation offers us a window into a bygone era, allowing us to unravel the mysteries of the past and gain insights into the ecological dynamics that allowed these awe-inspiring giants to thrive. So, <laughs> that was uh, the end of the video. I think that, that would be a suitable conclusion to this uh, this uh, video. I hope you enjoyed. Well, Oscar signing out. Thanks for watching.